All right, we're gonna go through the front of this. It's got one 12 volt battery on the front of the trailer. Two 20 pound propane cylinders that are full of propane, except for what I use to service the trailer. On your regulator, the auto changeover has the arrow on this side here. As soon as we open this cylinder up, should turn green inside the eye. Anytime this cylinder over here goes empty, it'll turn red on the inside of the eye, indicating that the bottle it's pointed to is empty and it's having to pick up from the other one, as long as the cylinder is already open. Then all you have to do is flip the arrow over to that side there, work off of that one while you take this one to town and have it refilled. We're going to go back to this one over here. We do have a hookup light for hooking up at nighttime. And we have an up and down switch for running the front of the trailer up or down. But there is a manual way that you can come through the top and manually crank that jack up or down. For any reason, it won't work off the switch. It does have a manual way to crank it up or down. While we're here in the front, it does have a battery disconnect on the tongue of the trailer. Since it has a 12 volt refrigerator, anytime that you don't want the trailer pulling from the 12 volt battery, you can turn that disconnect to the opposition and pull the key out. Also has a seven way holder on the side up here at the front. Keep the seven way up off the ground. And it has chain holders on either side of it. As we start down through here, we'll go to the first compartment. does have magnets to hold it up out of the way. There is two handles in here. The little one goes in the tongue jack that manually cranks the tongue jack up or down. Then you have your brass colored handle that does the balance jacks on all four corners. Your 30 amp power cord that hooks to the trailer. And a port spray hose that hooks to your port spray that gives you cold water for washing the trailer or animals or critters or anything but you want to watch on the outside of the trailer. We'll go ahead and shut this one back down. As we walk down here through the side, it does have lug nuts on the trailer. It's been torqued at 100 foot pounds. The tires are air to pressure, which is 55 pounds of air on the side of the tire cold. Underneath here, we do have the termination valve. Right towards the front of the termination valve, there is a tube on there for holding your sewer hose. Then the three inch valve in the back is your toilet water. The gray valve in the front will be your kitchen sink, bathroom sink, and shower water. Then we come up to our first connection is a city water connect that you can hook a water hose and regulator to and never have to fill the tank. Work right off the water pressure going through the hose to pressurize the faucets. The one right down below it is a black tank flush. After you have dumped your holding tanks, you can hook a water hose and a regulator to it. And it has a little aerator on the inside of the tank that spins around, helps clean out more of the debris out of the inside of the black tank only. Then you have your port spray hose. Your blue hose is in the front compartment, makes a quick disconnect like an air hose does here, and gives you cold water on this side of the trailer. Next one back is where your 30 amp power cord goes on, makes a quarter of a turn. The cord should be 25 to 30 foot long. As we step back here towards the back of the trailer, it does have a park cable hookup on the back. So that if you're at a park, you can actually hook onto that with their cable, and you'll have the same cable the park has on your TV on the inside. The one connection right down below it is a vent for the toy hauler part of the trailer. So that when you're moving, vehicles from one destination to another there is a way to vent the fumes to the outside the trailer is equipped for a backup camera up top and then your tailgate here we'll have to shut this garage door to the side and then we'll open up that back gate to open up the back gate you're going to lift up on the handle and turn it sideways allows it to come open it says it is strut assisted it does have cables so we're going to pull back on it you don't want no little kids underneath it when it comes down but it does have the cables it holds it up in place and you also have the screen curtain that comes around clicks into the aluminum sections here 
and makes a gate for around the tailgate when you want to use it for like a party deck or for critters. If you want the deck to go all the way down, you pull the pins here, allows it to go all the way to the ground. Then you can bring your toy side by side, motorcycle, whatever you want up into the unit itself. There is also a curtain that goes up and down here in the back to keep bugs from going in. So if you wanted to use this for like a party deck or an animals, and still keep the bugs out of the inside of the trailer, there is a netted screen that you can block it off with. We're going to go back to lift it back up. As you're lifting it up, you do want to make sure that the cables can stay to the inside. Going to bring it in, turn it down, and lock it into place. Step in that mug. And it can be locked with the gray key on your key ring on both sides. As we start down this side here, it does have a set of back steps going into the unit that accesses you into the toy hauler part, not the front of the trailer, but the back. It does have two outside speakers. I'll have to show you more about the speakers when we get to the inside. We also have another vent up here at the top for the toy hauler section. A 110 outlet on the outside of the trailer for appliances underneath the canopy. Outside of the furnace, sucks cold air in the top, hot air out the bottom. Already has the mud dauber screen over it. Your outside shower gives you hot and cold running water to this side of the trailer. You have cold water to the other side, but hot and cold to this side over here. Your fresh water tank will fill here. You have your two low water drain points underneath there. And the white cap coming out of the underbelly is where the freshwater tank drains. Outside of the hot water heater is next. Before you run the hot water heater on gas, you'll want to make sure that it's full of water. <laughs> Should have water coming out of the pop-off valve. <clears throat> but it also has a drain plug for draining the hot water heater for winterizing and dewinterizing and in between long trips. And the plug is actually an anode rod. An anode rod draws all the impurities out of the water to it, eats up that rod, instead of eating up the inside of the tank. Anytime the steel rod in the center is showing, it's time to replace it. It is prepped on the front for a solar panel. So if you wanted to put the solar panel out to the front of the trailer, we'll charge the battery on the front. <coughs> does have a magnetic hookup on this side over here and it has a gas line for the quick disconnect line. Quick disconnect line will hook into this then when you turn the T-handle on top in line with the gas line you'll have gas coming from your propane cylinders to whichever appliance you want to hook it up to. <coughs> Pretty good size through compartment. <coughs> Once you get the trailer on site, level from side to side, there's one more thing to do to it, is the adjustment of the steps. The steps are going to be in the up position, locked into the door frame when you come into the trailer. <coughs> Once the trailer's level, side to side, front to back, you'll come to the steps, you're going to pull the blue handle, allows the steps to come out, the door has to be fully extended open. Little push button on the bottom of each one of the legs. There's 15 to 18 slots in the bottom of each one of the legs for adjustment. The main thing on the steps is when it comes out and lays down, it has to lay flat in the threshold. Now we're going to go to the inside of the trailer. My shoes have a little mud on, so I'm going to stick them right here by the front door. That's why parents put their trust in Kirkland Health Center. Our expert physicians are committed to personalized care. As we come into the trailer, it does have a working fire signature on the left-hand side as we come in. We're going to come back up to the monitor panel. We're going to check the battery level. The battery level shows you fully charged. That's not really an accurate reading. To get an accurate reading of the battery, you have to have the 110 line unplugged and then push the battery button. Freshwater tank shows you the freshwater tank is still full of water. Black tank is your toilet water, and it's showing you that it's empty. And your gray tank's empty. 
We fill them with water, hold it, let them hold it water for over three or four hours, and then drain them out. The first red button right down below it is the switch that turns the water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets. The second one is the gas side of the hot water heater. When we turn it on, the little red light up at the top comes on. In about a minute's time, that little red light's going to go off. Then the hot water heater will go through two lighting processes to light on gas. For any reason it does not light on gas, the little red light up here at the top will come right back on. So we're going to go step right past that. The first switch here turns your LED lights on on your awning. The second one turns the light right above us on. First switch, flip switch down here at the bottom runs the awning out. I'm going to pull that door shut just a little bit. We're going to run the awning out as far as we can. I don't think it'll go all the way out because it hits the trailer next to us. But on that, there again too, on each one of the arms there is a pinch point. It does have the LED lights up underneath the awning. They look a lot prettier and brighter at nighttime. But each one of the awning arms has a pinch point that you can pull down on. It puts the pitch of the rain coming off this corner here. The back arm has the same arm on it. You can pull down on it and put the pitch of the rain going to the back door. But when you get ready to roll it up, it has to be pushed back up into the straight position. So when it rolls up, it fits back into the cradle up here at the top. We're going to go back inside the unit. The little blue screwdriver that was laying in the doorway is for your mud diver screen for the outside furnace for putting the screen on and off. There is two sets of keys to the trailer. One purple key does the front door lock and deadbolt. The other purple key does the back door lock and deadbolt. And then the gray key does your tailgate of the trailer for your toy hauler in. And then you have a 751 key on there for the locks on the two front compartments. And then the black key right there is for the outside shower. One of the most important pieces of paper in the whole unit is this one here. It has the model and serial number on all the appliances that's in the trailer. If for any reason any of the appliances would happen to go out, that's the first thing the warranty guy is going to ask you for. It is a model and serial number of the appliance that is broke. Very important piece of paper. I would laminate this and keep it with me at all times. On your kitchen faucet, it has a hot side and a cold side to it. But before water actually pours out of it, you have to pull back on the handle to get the water to come in and out. Light for the stove top and a fan. For the fan to work properly, there's two tabs on the outside that has to be lifted up. Allows the flapper to flap on the outside. Glass stove top. It's not an induction electric stove. The glass stove top has to be folded up out of your way two times before you can use the burners up on top. A little blue light on the right hand side turns the strikers on. That way when you turn it to pile it on they'll light all three of the burners up on top. Illumination around each one of the knobs. We're going to turn that back off and we do have a microwave convection oven right down below that. Since we didn't get the burners too hot on top, I'm going to go ahead and lay the glass stove top back down. The glass stove top has to be down in the travel position. In the refrigerator, there is two settings up there. One at the top for the freezer section it says cold or colder. You want to keep it on the cold side, not the colder. If you turn it to where it says colder, it keeps all the cold air in the freezer until it gets down to freezing. So you'll want to run that in the colder section and then you come down to the bottom and it has a push button for the refrigerator. And that is between 1 and 5. We're going to step off into the bathroom area. In the bathroom area you have a shower on the left hand side that has your hot and cold running water just like you would at home. Hot on the left side, cold on the right side. It does have a vented vent in the top with a fan for pulling the moisture out of the trailer. 
It has a round vent in the ceiling for bringing air conditioner into the bathroom area. You also have your GFI outlet in the bathroom that protects all the outlets in the trailer inside and out. And on your toilet down here, it does have a single foot flush on the right hand side. If you push halfway down on the pedal, water will fill to the bowl. If you push all the way down on the pedal, water will come into the bowl and drop through the bottom. We're going to step off into the toy hauling area. The brown vents on the cabinets brings the heat back to the toy area. You do have your vents on either side up here at the top. And one at the bottom on the other side for venting the toy area back in here. Anytime that you have a gas operated vehicle in here, it is best to have the vents open to vent the gas fumes to the outside. There is stickers on the walls that tell you the same thing that I'm telling you. But anytime you haul something that's got gas on the inside of it, it does need to be vented to the outside. You do have a 110 outlet and a USB port and another fire extinguisher in the toy area. There is two beds in the toy area. When a toy is in the toy unit itself, the two beds can be folded up on the side. They have a little strap on the side of the beds that comes up and hooks to the bungees up here at the top to pull the beds up out of the way. But your kitchen table that's back here has to go up to the front, to the bed area up front, when you have a toy in the toy section. You also have a 110 outlet on the back wall, right by the door, and a USB port, and a bottle opener right above that. The two round vents in the ceiling in the toy area are to bring the air conditioner from the air conditioner in the living room back to the toy area. The bag up here in the top is your screen for your tailgate. The uh, section's the tailgate off so the bugs don't come in. And you also have a fire escape window right down below it. Since this is used for a sleeping area, it does have a fire escape window. Grab a hold of the red tab, pull the screen loose. Red handle comes out and goes all the way through the bottom of the window frame for access in case of emergency. There are straps in the floor for holding your vehicles down, motorcycles or side-by-sides. <coughs> We're going to step back up into the living room area. There is a place on the wall up here for a TV. TV antenna booster works with the antenna on top of the trailer to give you amplified reception on the TV here. A 110 outlet to plug it into and it is also wired for Wi-Fi. It's not, it's prepped for Wi-Fi. It's not, wire, the wires are already there but the Wi-Fi is not hooked up. We're going to go back to the thermostat. We're going to turn it completely off. We're going to turn it back on. It gives you your fan speed. You got high. Low, cool, cool low, cool auto, and cool high, and dial your temperature that you want the trailer to come down to using the up and down arrows. If you hit the mode button one more time, it says heat in the lower left hand corner. You will dial your temperature up for that, for the furnace, and then when you get ready to shut it off, you hit the mode button one more time, and it should say off in the lower right hand corner, and the screen light will go off. does have an AM FM stereo. It has zones one and two. Zone one is inside the trailer. Zone two is the outside the trailer. It is also, you can Bluetooth to it. It has a USB port and an HDMI port and an auxiliary, which is actually for a set of headphones. <coughs> the remote for the fireplace, pretty explanatory. It has an on and off button. You have temperature settings low and high. You can dial your temperature up for it. You can also change the color of the rocks in the bottom. And it does have a timer so if you want to run it for 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, I think it goes up to nine, five hours. And then the red button will turn it back off. Don't take it long to have a temperature change on the electric uh, fireplaces. The tabletop comes off the two pedestals down below it. The tabletop goes down between the two benches. <laughs> Your two back cushions comes over the top of the table to make a smaller bed for this area. And the window behind it is not marked for a fire escape window, but it is actually big enough that you can escape out of it if you had to. Pull the T-handle here, the window slides over, pull the screen over and roll out that side of the window on that side over there. 
It also has storage underneath each one of the benches and in the back back here. So there is a lot of storage around the table area. We're going to come back up to the front bed area. It does have a 110 outlet and a USB port on either side of the bed in the front. To get the bed in the front done, you have to butterfly the couch down into a bed. There is a T handle over on the right hand side that brings the bed back out. And then we're going to flip the mattress over to make a queen size bed in the front of the trailer. To put it back up, you're going to flip the mattress back over the top of it. We're going to lift back up on the platform of the bed. We're going to bring the catch over, put it back into itself. We're going to lift up on the couch. Underneath the couch is just a little bit of storage, and it is also your big compartment up front for storage. Panel door on either side accesses you into the outside compartments where your blue hose and that is on this side over here. Over on this side it accesses you into the gas valve for your outside grill. It does have a little cabinet space over here to the side. It does have a uh, mattress cover in the front compartment for the mattress that's on the bed for when you take the plastic off. We're going to come back up to the air conditioner. The air conditioner has two quick cool downs, one on either side, so that when you first come into the trailer, you can open them up. That's all the cold air coming out right into this area. When you get ready, this area gets cold enough, you flip them back close, and it goes back to the round vents in the ceiling, and we'll go back to the toy holder section. One more thing to show you in the trailer before we get out. It does have a smoke detector above us, and it also has a carbon monoxide LP detector down here on the bottom of the cabinet. There is two distinct sounds from the LP detector, carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is louder and they last longer. There's four bursts two times in a row for the LP and the carbon monoxide. But the carbon monoxide is a little bit louder. But that is just basically everything on your trailer. If you ever have any questions, I'll try to answer all your questions to the best of my ability. And thank you for your time.